this is a, a panel basically addressing the issue how creativity and genius uh, uh, are facilitated or hampered. And especially we'll ask to our distinguished uh, panelists uh, what they think uh, can uh, facilitate uh, the actualization of human potentiality and especially uh, genius, uh, but uh, creativity. Uh, basically, uh, I am a psychologist uh, and a, a sociology of knowledge uh, aficionado. And so we know that uh, the basic tenets of the sociology of knowledge uh, is that reality is a social construction. So uh, we know that uh, in the world, uh, there are unfortunately too many ways uh, in which uh, creativity is uh, hampered and destroyed. Some uh, are gruesome, uh, well-known, the oppression of women. In some country, is even forbidden uh, to learn uh, to read. I'm reminded of Pol Pot, uh, Cambodia, to create the new ma man, uh, they would kill people with glasses uh, because Man with glasses, a woman with glasses, oh, uh -huh. can read an intellectual, can think with the, his own mind. Uh, of course, uh, I'm reminded also of uh, famous uh, scientists uh, like uh, our fellow, World Academy fellow, Abraham Maslow and uh, Carl Rogers, uh, they studied the gifted people and found uh, some common denominator. And uh, they, what they found uh, was very, very, very interesting uh, because uh, gifted people had in common that they were very curious and they have a lust for learning. Also, they were not uh, selfish, uh, but uh, they were very creative, uh, but very also people-oriented. Uh, and they had uh, often an uh, epiphany or ultra state of, of consciousness. Um, of course, uh, when another fellow was uh, that, that was uh, um, uh, the thinking about outside the box, uh, always reminded uh, Edward de Bono that uh, to think along uh, the uh, path already, you know, created uh, is uh, somehow st stifling, and this uh, brings us uh, to, for example, what in Europe uh, is. Uh, more than a quarter of a century, the uh, process uh, of becoming a, a knowledge society called the Bologna process, uh, he says, well, if we wanted to really promote uh, a knowledge society, we should stop uh, having uh, education that is centered on the professor, centered on the teachers, uh, but uh, had to be centered on the students. Uh, we know a lot about that. Uh, 30 million students that have been uh, uh, researchers that have been uh, uh, facilitated with a, an education that is person-centered and student-centered, so empowers them. And the results are excellent. More creativity, more retention uh, of the subject matter, also more proto-social behavior, and more active uh, citizenship. So maybe... Uh, it's interesting uh, what uh, uh, the famous uh, philosopher and uh, um, pedagogist uh, in the 1800s said, uh, John Dewey, I'm talking about, he said, uh, the problem with school is that there are too many teachers and too few facilitators of learners. Well, this is uh, just uh, an introduction. Uh, and uh, can uh, we please now have uh, for seven or so minutes, uh, starting uh, with Katalin Boguet, president of UNESCO 36th General Conference, uh, the 15th UN Ambassador of Hungary, and a fellow of was Katalin, please. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, um, dear professors, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, also called Alberto. 
Oh, Alberto. So because I, as, as I see, we are really uh, amongst friends and uh, family members here um, in this very distinguished organization of which I have been member for many years, actually, since I was the president of UNESCO General Conference. And thank you for that. So I think the development of talent really requires face and courage and cooperation. This I would like to underline, both on the part of the talented individual and on the part of the society. And talented people make themselves happier and the community richer. So the success of talent support is based on the combination of collaboration between the individual, the family, the society, and the government's support system. I would like to tell you two stories about mm -hmm. that to start with, two different approaches. The first story is of a Hungarian Nobel Prize laureate and the other by the father of the best ever women chess players, Laszlo Polgar, who raised or made actually three geniuses. Uh, the first story is about uh, Professor Ferenc Krauss, uh, uh, who got the Nobel uh, um, Prize for Physics last year. And actually, we were grown up together in a very little village in Hungary. Uh, he's younger than me, so we didn't go to the same class, but we went to the same schools, to the same gymnasium. So he spent his first 18 years in a little village, not in a fancy school, not in a very famous gymnasium. And when I just had a live talk with him, I told the whole village, because everyone came to meet him, that of course it takes a whole village to raise a child. We know this beautiful proverb, which is um, very well known in Africa. And I very much believe in that because we, and everyone who was brought up in this little village needed the whole village to influence and to raise a child. So we both experienced that a community of people have provided for and interacted positively with us to grow in a safe and healthy environment. Uh, the 62 years old Nobel laureate professor Ferenc Krauss, was father is a builder and the mother was a physical worker. They never mm -hmm. went to university in their family and they really wanted to provide and support everything for the boys, for their two sons. So the little boy was taken actually by mathematics from a very early age. And uh, instead of going to the playground, he looked deeper and deeper into his homework. And there was a teacher. He was a lucky boy because there was a teacher who recognized his talent, his e e eagerness. And as seeing the talent of this little boy, he spent absolutely freely extra time with him, gave him special tasks to solve, inspired him, and really lead him to a mesmerizing world of physics. So Professor Krauss always identifies his primary school teacher as the one who opened his eyes and curiosity. So the schools and the gymnasium were not, not only extra fancy or famous, as I said, but the persons, the teachers are the ones who really inspired him and recognized his talent. And of course, then he went to university in Budapest, then he went to Vienna, um, you know, he made his uh, um, um, groundbreaking uh, research in Vienna, then he went to Munich where he works now. But instead of the start and instead of the eyes and the knowledge and really the hard work of the, uh, of the teacher, probably he would have not come as far as he did. And um, I asked him, you know, what did your mother teach you? And then he said, she told me, be always polite, greet them, the people always nicely, and think about their human dignity because dignity, because we also would like, you know, to, to be thought um, that way. So what a great lesson it was for a little child. And I asked him, so what did you what did your father teach you? And then he said, Well, 
My father was actually never at home, but he taught me hard work. So actually, as a very young child, he had the mother and the father gave giving him a very important lesson for life. And he had the chance and luckiness to meet the right teacher. So when we are talking about the role of family and the teachers and the I would say mentors recognizing the talent and lifting it up. This is what I meant uh, under the collaboration. And of course, talent, faith, love, diligence, hard work, endurance, persistence. We all know that they are all needed to find the important feeling of the flow. Because he also told me when I asked him, why on earth, you know, were you so taken by the physics? He said, because by now I know that I found the flow. I found as a child the flow. This concept of flow comes also um, or was named also by an, another Hungarian, um, uh, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. And he said that the best moments in our lives are not the passive and receptive relaxing times, but the best moments usually occur if a person's body or mind is stretched, stretched to its limit in a voluntary effort to accomplish something difficult and worthwhile. So how do we recognize really and support the, the, the genius or the talent? And we know that our societies have been much more encouraging, for example, of athletic talents than we are of intellectual talents. Having said that, we know that these gifted students are the future and uh, these are the kids who have the most potential to solve the problems of the future. Now, as I said, there is another story, which is a little bit different. And that story goes back to the famous family, the Polgar family. Polgar Laszlo, who was himself a teacher, uh, raised three geniuses, but he did not let them go to normal school because he said, as Cheeks and Mihai's, also suggested that to work with creative people, it means a process. It means the energy, the intelligence, and the discipline, what you have to teach them in a way. And we know that the genius, you know, is a combination of work and luck and favorable circumstances. We know many quotes like Chaplin said, the talent is nothing discipline is everything. We know that Edison said that genius is only 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. So this uh, Laszlo Polgar uh, decided to raise geniuses. Uh, he fully realized that uh, genius is the same in his op in opinion as an outstanding person. An outstanding person differs on the one hand, quantitatively from the average. And on the other hand, he they realize in society and more valuable, more original creativity. Being outstanding comes from uh, different stages and we can distinguish different phases of that. If we have more time, I will tell you the story how the three girls Susan, who became the first ever woman grandmaster in chess in the world, uh, Sophie, and Judith, who has become the first and strongest ever chess player, woman chess player in the world, did it without going to school because their father said that in school they would lose the creativity, the discipline, and really the result, what they managed really to show to the world. Thank you very much for the first Thank round. Thank you very much, uh, Kathleen. Now we go to Rosalia Artega, former uh, president of Ecuador and also former education minister of uh, Ecuador and uh, one of our fellow. Please, uh, Rosalia. Uh, thank you, Alberto. Uh, my best wishes to Kathleen and Bru and uh, all of you that are sharing with us this panel. Uh, I will talk uh, about my experience because I have uh, several fields of, of working. I was a teacher when I was very young. 
and uh, I teach students in the secondary school. I, I never teach the small kids, but I can feel the impact that a teacher can make in the students, even they when, when they are grown. When I see the uh, the uh, all the spectrum of my students, I can feel um, the change that uh, uh, a teacher can can make for good or for bad. It is true for good or for bad. Then I want to emphasize in good teachers and how they can impact. Um, I for sure. Um, can feel that in a, in the terms of identifying talent, developing individual and recognizing genius, this is a binomial activity between fathers, parents, and teachers. It is uh, not easy to separate them because if you, like a father, like a mom, can discover a special talent in your kid and you share it with the teachers, or the teachers discover something that you cannot, you didn't see at the beginning in your kid. It could be a match between them. It's not easy to have those match. I, I remember the movie, the uh, effect uh, Williams with the father of Serena and the other Williams uh, girls that were all of them uh, extraordinary tennis players. But the impulse of the father was unbelievable. He uh, make uh, very visible the talent that the girls had and uh, transform them on the champions on, on, of the world, the girls. Uh, it is very impressive. The other experience that I have uh, is that nowadays I am leading uh, two initiatives. One, I am the president of the UNIR University that is a Spanish university. And we can feel how we can develop uh, a lot of things that probably were like hidden uh, in, in terms of even professionals that, well, they were like uh, engineers, but discovered that artificial intelligence is the field. This university is going around the world in the Spanish uh, world, <laughs> excuse me for my cough. Uh, and um, the other uh, um, field that I am working now is I am the head of the, Fidal Foundation is a foundation that works mainly in Ecuador, but also in other parts of the uh, Latin America and Spain. And it's, it's so interesting because uh, first we work with teachers. We have a prize for the best teachers of uh, uh, Latin America and Ibero-America. And it is fantastic, the talented teachers that you can find and the impact they, they, that they receive when they get recognition. Because most of the teachers, they don't have any recognition. They have really bad self-esteem. They are not very good, well paid, especially in Latin countries. In Latin American countries, the salary are really poor and the social recognition is almost inexistent then when we give the prizes to them, it is uh, something that makes them believe in themselves and then they can transmit it to the, to the students. Uh, as Kathleen says, I have several experiences. Uh, recently, we have a, a, a girl, a teacher, that is a teacher of uh, uh, people that cannot see blind, blind teach, uh, students. Right. And he was recognized like the best uh, teacher of Ecuador and Iberoamerica. But uh, after that, she decided to go into participate into the World Teacher Award. And now it's in between the 50 teachers, best teachers in the world, recognized by Barkett Foundation in UNESCO last year in Paris. And the uh, what she can do now is fantastic because she can influence others and discover talents in between these um, handicapped uh, kids, uh, blind kids. Uh, we have uh, also in FIDAL a school for leaders. Uh, we started it 10 years ago and uh, we work with um, young leaders from 18 to 35 and um, we are uh, making a difference during these 10 years. I am absolutely sure um, because, and I'm very enthusiastic and proud of it uh, because the, uh, our, our slogan for um, the School of Leaders is um, with better Ecuadorians, we can have a better Ecuador. And uh, of course, we feel that when they, uh, after six months of, of, of being with us, uh, working, learning, 
uh, doing uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, projects, uh, they can make the difference. Nowadays, we have some of them like um, authorities, local authorities for now, not uh, uh, national authorities. And, and we have others that are dedicated uh, to social um, institutions and also um, dedicated to business, but having ethical parameters and a basis of uh, working um, in uh, um, teams. Uh, we, we privilege a lot working together and uh, we get a lot of uh, uh, good um, uh, examples of how it works. Then uh, I put a lot of effort and to finalize this first intervention in um, terms of uh, team between parents and teachers and also the impact that uh, a good uh, education can make to discover talents. We discovered some talents in our classes and um, the, the idea is to, to expand it. Uh, I, I know that you, Alberto, says there are a lot of teachers, how we can make the difference between these teachers. Well, the uh, formula of success is teaching the teachers. Teaching the teachers is probably the best investment that we can do in the world because they are the protagonist of the process and uh, a good teacher make a difference. Even if they don't have a good school, even if they don't have a, an infrastructure, I know uh, teachers that are going through a small car, taking bricks from donation and building a, a, a sanitarium, a, 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 a bath uh, for, for the small kids that they don't have anything or getting some tools or implements and improving the quality of education, even in the worst conditions. Yeah, that's uh, my first uh, round participation. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we go to Bru Recolones, the president of Impulsa Talentum Foundation. Please, Bru. Thanks, uh, thanks, um, Rosalia, Catalina, and Alberto. I would like to thank the organization, and especially its president, Mr. Gary Jacobs, with whom I had the opportunity to attend an international forum for peace in November, last November, especially causing, uh, uh, closing a talk, um, a talk uh, on talent in the service of peace. The name of this uh, Congress was Talent for Peace. On that occasion, I had the opportunity to explain the project that we are leading from our foundation with the idea to create useful tools to promote the proper use of human talent. Next month, the manifesto that initiates the movement towards this goal will be presented at the City Hall of Barcelona, my country. I believe that the most appropriate thing for the purpose of today is a uh, talk uh, of today's talks uh, was to read out a summary of the manifesto to you, since it is a clear tool for achieving the intended uh, intended purpose. Okay, so in a world increasingly dominated by technological uh, adv advancement, there emerges an imperative need to reclaim the central place of human beings in innovation and progress. The world must evolve to the better, not just for economic or scientific interest. We desire a better world where men and women live better lives and where social cohesion, health, peace and equity are the drivers of governance and the ultimate goal of technological improvement. We believe that the talent of individuals and its development through the education system, its promotion and consolidation through the economic sec sectors and the man management of its contribution to public life through administrations, it's the way to achieve this. We, the signatories, recognize that it is time to promote a new era in which the culture of talent and humanism get the way to a far uh, more inclusive and sustainable future. 
Barcelona with its rich cultural heritage and as a cradle of innovations and artistic movements has become the international meeting point for the promotion and development of a talent culture that places humans at the center of uh, any technological advance. Barcelona must also emerge as the world capital of talent. Therefore, we proclaim our values, which are first, contemporary humanism, which is necessary to focus technological advancement and innovation with a perspective centered on the human being and they recognize the unique value of talent. Promotion of human rights, which is important to ensure that technologically service as a tool to promote human rights, equi equality and inclusion, always respecting the, the, the dignity and value of each person, responsibility, innovation, to advocate development and propose not only economic progress, but also social, cultural, and environment well-being, collaboration and diversity, to celebrate and promote the diversity of talent, creating collaborative spaces that unite disciplines, cultures, and world builds. For the reason, we want to transform Barcelona into a global benchmark as a Barcelona World Talent Hub, a center where talent is cultivated, promoted, and celebrated in all its forms. This hub must be an engine for of responsible innovation that ensures that technological progress serves the needs and well-being of society as a whole. Therefore, we commit to promote a talent culture found the Talent Observatory and hold congresses and events. These three points, the community and the observatory and the Congress constitute the Barcelona World Talent Hub. We invite institutions, companies and entities from Barcelona and all around the world to join forces with us, committing the prom to promote a culture of talent that places a human being at the center, at the center of advancement and innovation, Barcelona stands as uh, the heart of this moment, open to welcoming and inspiring all those who share this vision of a future uh, built on talent, creativity, and human values. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bru. And now a very quick uh, second round, uh, and we start uh, with Rosalia. Rosalia and then Kathleen and then again you, Bru. Please, Rosalia. Uh, thank you, thank you, Alberto. I want to emphasize in this uh, very uh, short uh, second round in uh, an issue that is known by the uh, researchers. The two percent of the whole the population of the in the world in the different places it doesn't matter if they are rich places they are developed countries or non developed countries they are talented kids two percent in the world at least um, the situation is that in the developed countries the talented are recognized immediately and cultured cultivated to grow and to to have a a successful life. In uh, um, certain countries, like mine, including my country, it is not uh, recognized this talented. And uh, sometimes the parents and the teachers think that they are noisy kids, that they are bothering the others, that they are not adapting to the school. Uh, and they, uh, uh, some say, some people say they are hyperkinetics, they are that and that. And finally, the kid started to be buried in classes because he is not uh, receiving the attention that they need. And uh, after they are developing a condition to be a problematic kids, instead of uh, having the talented um, and the possibility to have a genius, a new Einstein, a new uh, music uh, musician that creates the best symphony or be a politician because we can uh, uh, search the talents in the different areas of the knowledge in the world or a, or a, or a new inventor or, or a new uh, fantastic social worker, they start to be problematic. And then these talented kids 
are wasted for themselves, especially for the family and for the society, because uh, it doesn't matter where you are born, you can be a talented person. The only need uh, that they have is to be discovered like a talented one and uh, to uh, react um, in terms of supporting them, special needs, for example, because in countries like uh, most of the countries, there are special schools for people uh, with disabilities, uh, Down syndrome or autism and others, but very few schools dedicated to support the talented people. And, and that's a pity because we are wasting talent in, a, in, a, in countries that need desperately new talents, new leaders, new people that create the possibilities for better situations for the people in general. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now we go to Catalin. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I listened very carefully to uh, both of you. And I think we... We, we have to be very clear. Are we talking about talent, talent management, or are we talking about genius? Because you can be talented, you can be very important part, a person in your society, in the world. Probably you are not a genius, but you are very talented. And there are some very few who are the geniuses. And I, I just would like to go back to my favorite quotes when Johann Sebastian Bach said that anyone can achieve my level, and he was a genius, if he is as diligent as I have been my entire life. Or Goethe said, genius, probably merely diligence. Or Balzac said, every human talent consists of two parts, patience and time. I think it's very important to see how you distinguish between talented people and recognizing geniuses or even creating. As I said, the Laszlo Polgar, the father of the three genius chess players, um, Susan, Sophie, and Judith, he was obsessed with studying the biographies of approximately 400 great intellectuals, from Socrates to Einstein. And he said that while reading those biographies, he had identified the common theme, intensive specialization in a particular subject. So Polgar started to put this discovery into practice and started to educate his three daughters according to that. He decided to homeschool, as I said, and actually he started the education in a very early age and the first characteristic of genius education, according to his practice and his ex example, because he did it, he showed it, um, uh, is the novelty distinguishing it from contemporary instruction. And it's, necess it's necessary precondition, the early age specialization. Now, of course, we can argue on that. We can talk about that. But that was his approach and he did it. But we also have to see that there are a lot of talented students. And I would like to go to Rosalia talking about uh, the, the important role of the schools and the teachers. And my example with the Hungarian Nobel Prize laureate, you know, growing up in a village where the, the parents never had anything to do with science and meeting the right person, the right teacher, really made him the, in a way, genius scientist later on in his life. Uh, in Hungary, I just would like to say that we have a very strong system, even recognized by the law, to recognize and nourish and manage the talent. And I think this is very important. Of course, I'm coming from a land full of great musicians and scientists. Uh, you know, the number of our Nobel Prize winner and world famous musicians are very well known. But the law really is here to give the chance to the people, to the children from the early age, because the purpose of the law uh, is to create a public education system to promote children's the harmonious spiritual, physical, and intellectual development of the young people, the children, and through the conscious development of their skills, abilities, 
knowledge, emotion and, and uh, qualities, education in accordance with their age characteristics. And I think this is very important to have the law, the support system, and to recognize, of course, and cherish the good teachers. I could also talk especially about music education, which has got a very strong talent management system in Hungary, if we have a little bit of time. But I wanted to say that nourishing, um, helping and managing the talent is one thing. And to recognize and work with the genius is something different. And probably we should talk about that a little bit more. Thank you very much. Thank you. And let's see if uh, we have some more time. Uh, let's hear Bru first. Yeah, <clears throat> well, my opinion, uh, we are living in a moment of enormous transformations comparable to invention of writing or printing. And we must uh, be able to anticipate and um, provide solutions to these challenges. Uh, what we are trying to do with the observatory, the Congress and the community is to try to organize everything. And uh, it's as important as uh, you, you were talking, um, uh, Kathleen, it's very important uh, talent, but also genius. I think uh, it's the, the beginning is the, 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 the kit the, to identify the kids' talents when they are very, very young. If we are able to do that, then we can uh, align their careers uh, from the heart of these babies or these kids, uh, starting uh, in their own talents, and then we can let them uh, shine and to be uh, better persons to help the community and shine and illuminate the community. Um, this is one of the of the challenges that we have in the in the observatory. Try to identify how to uh, help the, the kids to know which are their talents. Um, we have several lines of study because it's important the talent, not only for the person, what we have to do with the talent of the seniors when at uh, probably 55 or 60 years old, they finish their career, they, their work, and then they have a lot of years uh, with a lot of ideas and uh, knowledge in their minds, but society say them, no, no, go home. This is a crazy thing. It's an opportunity that we are losing every day with all the people with talent that is not working on not um, helping the, 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 the rest of the community. Uh, not only persons, even um, uh, countries, countries has to be able to do maps to, to, to identify which are the talents that are going to have problems because some disruptions, technological disruptions are going to change their minds, their, their, their works. And we have to, uh, to observe it and to anticipate, to try to help them to become again, to help the society. Uh, countries, people and organizations. Organizations has a very big problem right now. Many companies, uh, probably the most that has this problem is the, the technological uh, companies. They are very, very busy, very, very, very worried because they have two um, uh, more rotation than the one, the one that they can uh, support. And well, what I mean is talent uh, on that moment is the water. It's like the water is, is something that everyone, uh, everybody needs. And we have to study and try to know how to uh, manage uh, this water. And this is uh, my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Since uh, I, I don't see uh, for now some statement, but uh, you can have uh, two, three minutes, uh, Kathleen, uh, to share with us uh, what you desire. Thank you very much. I just would like to raise another aspect of recognizing talent and helping children, young people um, to, to learn how to deal with the talent. And uh, it goes back to music and music education. It doesn't mean that you will become a musician. But for example, if you are a pianist, 
um, you know, you have to know how to focus. You have to know how to uh, work with your hands, how to work with your legs, you know, how to read music, um, um, how to remember everything. And still, you know all that, the music is not there. If you don't put your heart and uh, and hard work and soul into it, you can't find and can't make really music. Now, in Hungary, uh, we have another method, which is, of course, uh, very well known worldwide and um, used in many countries, and that's the Kodai method. Uh, this is about singing. This is about singing together, children, young children learning to sing together. And of course, it it is, of course, we know that um, it not only improves the rhythm skills and uh, it helps music literacy, but it is also uh, outside music. It's shown the improve different functions like the, 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 the motor skills and the performance in other academic areas. So what I'm seeing, saying that in a school system, I think it's very important, and I will be arguing for that always, that you put music education into the syllabus because music education will help you a lot also to recognize and teach the talent and how to deal with the talent, not to mention the social up, uh, um, part of that. Uh, another famous uh, Hungarian conductor, uh, Maestro Scholti, Sergei Ok Scholti, for example, uh, great conductor of the 20th century, put together the orchestra for peace. And he said, now let's really invite great musicians from all over the world. We have to work together. We have to look at each other. We have to concentrate on each other. You know, we have to listen to each other. And he said, let's send a clear message to politicians that this is really international collaboration. Because after all, we are talking about how to nurture talent, how to recognize talent, how to educate people, young people. But as you all said, it's all about the future of humanity. And for the future of humanity, we also have to teach them how to collaborate, not only how to race, as Bela Bartok said, horse, you know, races are for horses and not for musicians. So we have to teach the children, the talented ones, the, 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 the geniuses as well, how to comp contribute to the development and to really the betterment of humanity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kathleen. Well, we have only five minutes uh, to the end of this session. Uh, and uh, I'll read uh, somebody's message uh, that says... Uh, we all, as parents, teachers, uh, leaders uh, of educational institution, must be extremely uh, attentive and sensitive to absolutely each child, uh, to his special individuality, psychic talents, uh, and suddenly responding to his uh, growing needs. <coughs> actively creating a nutrition, intellectual, and cultural environment uh, around him or her, gathering for uh, specialists to teach him the most accurate and deep knowledge. We must help him reach the peak of his capacity, reveal his uh, hidden uh, potential. We need uh, to adapt uh, and improve uh, our educational methods uh, to more effectively integrate uh, uh, extensive knowledge in uh, a fun and uh, multifaceted way that meets uh, uh, the modern uh, the the, the modern needs of children and of our time. Very often, it is necessary to carry out simultaneous education. I work with his parents who sometimes do not fully understand, as somebody was already saying, uh, 
their role, perhaps uh, due to their uh, youth and experience uh, or due to their employment related uh, uh, to the survival of their family in unfavorable social conditions. This uh, support for the family should be comprehensive in involving assistance at different level. We must take more care of each other uh, 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 and music is an aesthetic education so uh, necessary for persons uh, which harmoniously uh, develops uh, absolutely all aspects uh, of our of his uh, personality um, uh, while at the same time uh, Uniting us, uh, as Ludwig van Beethoven said, uh, about the vibration of the air are the breath of God uh, speaking uh, to man's soul. Music uh, is the language of God. Uh, we music musicians uh, are as close to God uh, as man can be. We hear his uh, voice, we read his lips, we give birth to the children of God who um, sing his praise. That's what musicians are. Uh, I'm reminded also that music is considered the most uh, expressive way to express emotion uh, in, in, you know, and share it with a large community. 